Welcome to Almost Here, Round the Corner of Future Technology podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies poised to transform our lives for better or worse are the focus of this podcast. Almost Here means these technologies are now here and starting to be used or just around the corner from Bitcoin to artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Future Tech Podcast. I'm your host, Juliette Lamar, and joining us today is Yogesh Shahari. He is the CEO and co-founder at Liquidex. Welcome, Yogesh. Uh, Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, we're looking forward to hearing all about Liquidex and what you're doing over there. So, you know, for our listeners who might not be acquainted with your company, can you give us a little bit of an overview? Yeah, so uh, Liquidex uh, is a cryptocurrency cross-chain exchange. Uh, What it means is, uh, so there's a lot of decentralized exchanges in the blockchain world. Uh, There's an open problem, which is cross-chain exchange. So basically, there are a bunch of blockchains. So there are assets being being minted and actually been built on different blockchains. So hence, you want to have a way to exchange assets cross-chain. Uh, there's a lot of centralized exchanges which already do that, but there's nothing that is trustless and decentralized uh, that actually exchanges assets between different blockchains. For example, you can be exchanging Bitcoin for Ether. Um, that is in a trustless way. Uh, you can still do that in a centralized exchange, but there's no trustless way to do that. And that's what uh, LiquidX does. Oh, fantastic. And and that really is setting you apart from, from a lot of other companies doing the same thing, because that's a, a pretty large uh, challenge for a lot of different companies. Yeah. So the thing is that the challenge, challenge is more technical because the blockchain world is super technical at this time. There's a lot of layers of protocol, technical protocols are being built. There's other 15, 15 other projects which are attempting uh, cross-chain protocols. Uh, and Exchange is one of them, and uh, we are one of those projects. But... None, none of them is actually out there that you can use. Um, I think uh, we are planning to release that exchange uh, by the end of the year, but we'll have multiple products, uh, smaller component products that's going to be released before that. Uh, but yes, this, this is something that is unique open problem in blockchain space. Absolutely. And you know, this space has a lot of different uh, challenges that, that are arising, but I feel like there's so many solutions that are, that are coming to light quite recently in, in response to all these challenges. Uh, so I lost the last part of what you said. Oh, just that, you know, I feel like the space is getting a little bit more of a grip um, together with, with the different challenges that have been coming up and, and the negative press. I think a lot of people are stepping up who truly believe in this technology to create solutions that are, that are going to stick and they're going to work. Yeah, exactly. Right. So basically I think it's, it's just the evolution of technology, right? So it's, I mean, then internet first uh, was in 1995, internet of 1995. So Amazon was just starting then and you could not really do much. You could still kind of buy books online, but it was like so difficult. So this is the, this not JavaScript was not so well uh, developed and a lot of technology layers were not there. And that's kind of a similar problem here. Uh, the most of the companies should be focusing not on ICOs and raising money, but into actually building the technology layers for future startups, essentially, uh, protocols and layers, essentially. So, yeah. Because it truly is about, about working together and, and building upon these different technologies and using different parts in a way that benefits what you're trying to do, because there are so many different use cases. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the thing is, this is the thing, right? So, we do, so it, it's not really clear which of those use cases will be strongly used, which of those use cases mm-hmm. may not work on blockchain. Uh, so this was the same state where, like, again, going back to the Internet of 1997 example, like, is, is something, yet, something like Yelp or something like um, Facebook would actually work on the Internet. So you never had this clear idea. So this is, that's why it's better to focus on technology, more technology-driven focus, as opposed to, like, oh, I'm going to come up with this big idea of healthcare or something like that that's going to work. But that is, like, too far, like, a little far, in my opinion. It might work. To a certain specific use cases, but not for like a broader use case. I think that's just my opinion on this. No, that's that's, that's great. So, um, if people, let's talk a little bit about your platform. Um, so when uh-huh. people come, you know, what what are you going to be expecting when you come on and and how to sign up and all of that? Uh, so 
uh, to just take a step back and say that, okay, so a lot of blockchain-based apps are that are very difficult to use at this time. The same, the UI and UX really is kind of tricky. Uh, so what, uh, the first and foremost, what, first and foremost, what we're focusing on is to have uh, a very um, easy way for people to move their funds, move their Bitcoin or Ether or any other native blockchain assets into the, into the liquid network. Uh, once you move your assets, then you can start trading them um, on LiquidX Exchange. So it's going to be like a web interface. Uh, we also plan to have a mobile interface. Uh, just, just working, really thinking through every simple UI and UX problems that UI, the user might face. Tell us a little bit about, are there any fees associated and, and what kind of uh, information is needed to, to sign up and start using LiquidX? So, uh, so it, it could be as simple as going to a web page. Uh, we are trying to make sure that we don't have to sign up anywhere or, or we'll have limited uh, sign up because uh, the idea behind LiquidX is uh, since it's decentralized, I know that word is being overused, but I think um, like a better way to say that it's trustless, meaning you keep your own funds. You don't, no one manages your funds like a centralized exchange. So uh, you just go, uh, you just, you just go to a liquid ex exchange website and you can, you should be able to start trading directly, uh, start moving your funds and start trading directly. So that's how simple it should be. Um, uh, the fees associated with it is uh, uh, we, so basically, exchange is run by everyone because exchange is powered by a proof of stake blockchain uh, behind. So basically, there are entities like miners in Bitcoin. There's entities called collators. We call them collators. Uh, collators run the exchange technically. So we will be a collator as well. And it's a public blockchain. We don't own anything of the exchange, really. Uh, so we, we are collators, like anyone can be a collator. And collator will charge a very minute fees of 0.1 to 0.2% for each trade, uh, executing each trade. And also for, there'll be a small fee for withdrawal. We don't charge fees for uh, deposit. Uh, and this fees is community voted, meaning everyone will vote to decide on this fees as we go along, depending on the inflation rate of the LiquidX token, essentially. I don't know whether it makes sense. There's a lot of things I said. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, you know, it, it, it makes a little bit of sense. And I think that people are going to have to, to jump in, get their feet wet and start using it. And it starts to make sense. I think that in the space, particularly, it's really the first step is the hardest, right? And then once you get into the world and you start using it, it all starts to cl clear up for you. Yeah, so for a, for a user, uh, for a trader, for example, I'm a retail investor or trader who wants to buy a bunch of Bitcoin or Ether or some, any other native assets. Uh, it, it's nothing. Just go to a website. You just put your order in, uh, just like any other exchange website that I want to buy so much for such price. And uh, if there is an order, if there's someone can fill that order, someone will fill that order, essentially. So I don't think traders or users will notice any difference uh, of using LiquidX. Just internally, it's a lot of lot of things is going on because it's heavily built on blockchain. So, yeah. Very cool. Tell us a little bit about your background and and your how you got involved in the space. Uh, so I was dabbling with blockchain for a long time, like maybe like 2013, 2014. But I was just reading about it and just uh, I just did not. I was trying to start different kinds of companies and I was just failing. I don't know. The, the, I'm, I'm like I, I fail like maybe 25 times or more, I guess, because I tried to start a company. I I somehow uh, could not raise money or could not. Uh, gather enough confidence to go forward with it, keep going on it, and I just fail and just go back and take a job. <laughs> so my background is I worked as a software engineer at different um, software startups like uh, in San Francisco. Uh, right now I'm in LA, but um, uh, like I work at Google, I worked at um, Zephyr in LA. So there's a bunch of software startups I worked at. Um, just this is what I did. I mean, this my, my rule was very simple. Keep trying to start companies three, three, four months. If it doesn't work out, go back and take a job. So this this, I kept on doing this for like three or four years. And uh, finally, I started a company called, uh, I don't know whether it's, I want to say that, it's a, it's a very popular blockchain startup called Spank Chain. <laughs> uh, it was, uh -huh. I started it last year. Uh, we raised, uh, we, we had a really decent ICO and uh, the market cap of the company was really good. And uh, we built really great technology. Um, the, and it, it, uh, we built a payment channel. Uh, uh, so essentially, that was very useful for that industry, essentially. And uh, yeah, that is the most uh, successful startup, actually, I've been part of, actually, until now. And now LiquidX is 
is um, yeah, LiquidX is a very great open solvent to work on essentially. Yeah. That is that is so cool and such a wonderful story because you know it truly does just take trying things out. Yeah, I mean, I think I think your odds of your odds of success might kind of improve as you try more things because you learn probably you learn faster as you you as, as you try tougher problems to solve. I think, and it kind of increases your odds of maybe I guess, I guess having a great startup or a great company someday. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, one uh, one of our guests we had on here, he was a serial entrepreneur as well, and he his best advice was fail fast. He's like, you want to try an idea and you want it to to fail quickly if it's going to fail. If it's going to succeed, you want it to succeed, but if it's going to fail, you want it to fail quickly so you don't waste a lot of time on it, and then you can learn and then immediately reinvest that knowledge into your next idea. That's that's pretty much it. That's Silicon Valley motto. That that's like fail fast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, you're down here in Los Angeles. You're down here towards me. I'm also in the Los Angeles area. Um, you know, this is a, as a random question, but you know, down here, I feel like it's becoming a little bit more techie. It's really starting to have uh, a big tech influence where before people really thought it was all up in, uh, up north. But now I feel like Silicon Beach is kind of a thing. Yeah. There are really Google, Snapchat, such companies. And also there's a lot of blockchain startups here. Uh, I think other reasons is I guess the Venus and Santa Monica has a really strong close knit tech community because I, I failed so much in San Francisco I come to LA and I start a super awesome company so and uh, that's why I think um, uh, I think people are more helpful I think because it's so so small the community is so small and it's actually growing so it's like they want to help each other quickly so uh, it, it, it it's it's um, it's definitely it's San Francisco is so much noise there. Everyone wants to build something stereotypical, right? So it's like there's so much noise in San Francisco. I'm not saying San Francisco is bad, but for me, it was a little tricky to identify what to work on and what ideas will work and not work and what ideas I have to work on, spend my time on. It. So at least it made kind of sense here. It was much easier to strike forward, actually. So, yeah. Oh, very cool. So if people want to start uh, using LiquidX, you know, what are the steps to sign up and you know, how quickly can they... Can they start trading and getting involved? Um, so uh, it should not be more than two steps um, because we we will not be dealing with fiat currency at this point uh, for mm-hmm. regulation, the regulatory issues. It, it will be assets that you already have on blockchain. Uh, you know, you have Zcash, you have Bcash, you have any other assets you have by blockchain. Okay, if you can move the asset to LiquidX network, then you can you will. So basically, the way it works is to give you a analogous idea, not going deep into technology itself. Uh, so you go to you go to a casino. Uh, you don't you don't actually trade. Uh, you, you don't actually gamble with your real money. The way you, gam- you the way you do that is you go and buy those plastic chips, and you start trading. You start using plastic chips for every casino uh, gambling game that you play. So uh, that's the same thing. You 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 bring your real asset into the LiquidX network. Uh, there's, that's the step one. The step two is moving the asset to LiquidX network. Once you move the asset, we give you the chip that you can click start trading with. <laughs> if it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so you can just easily yeah, so that, easily transfer all those assets. Exactly. And when you want to cash out, like in a casino, you just take the chips and say tell LiquidX Network that you want your asset that you traded back, and you will be getting. So basically, the way it works is okay. You will tell uh, an address, the external Bitcoin address, for example, the Bitcoin you traded back for Ether or something. Uh, you'll give the Bitcoin address to LiquidX Network, and LiquidX Network will send you the Bitcoin that you just traded. Uh, and that's about it. That's three steps, pretty much. First is to sending, moving the money, then trading with any kind of other assets that's available on LiquidX Network, and getting back that asset, essentially, that you traded in or traded out. Fantastic. And and this is up and available right now. People can start using it. Uh, so, yeah. So, that is, yeah, basically, our, plan, our exchange, complete exchange will be launched in two to three months. But uh, there are Parts of the product that's being launched that's still useful. Um, uh, one is LiquidX Bridge that's going to be launched. Um, uh, hopefully, we'll make the will be ready uh, by September 15th. And the uh, bridges actually helps other decentralized exchanges on Ethereum to trade assets that was not able to that, that's not that's currently not being able to trade. For example, you cannot trade Bitcoin versus all the tokens on Ethereum essentially. So. Uh, you can do that if you use LiquidX Bridge. And Bridge is exactly similar steps that I said for the exchange. Yeah, but it's just a smaller piece of the exchange 
So basically, we are incrementally building the product and we're saying, okay, this can be exposed right now and people can start using it and it can be helpful for other exchanges and we just release the product essentially. So, and that's kind of the way we are uh, like incrementally exposing our product. Yeah. Fantastic. So uh, what is the best way for people to connect with you, uh, social media, website, and and also just to, to follow your journey if they want to read the white paper, see the press? What's the best way to connect? So the best way to contact is you can go to LiquidX website. It's lqdex.com. Um, and uh, yeah, you can mail me at y at liquidx.com. Uh, and that's, um, that's the best way to reach me. And uh, you can connect me on LinkedIn. Um, you can send me messages. I might randomly look at LinkedIn. But uh, it's better to send me a mail directly if you want to talk to me or talk to me about technology or the product. And uh, are you on social media at all if people want to follow, follow the company? Yeah, so I I do have a Twitter account. Uh, I was not so much on uh, not so much on uh, social media before. Uh, I do have Twitter and of course LinkedIn. Um, I don't know whether I use any other forms of social media, uh, <laughs> but yeah, definitely Twitter and LinkedIn. Fantastic. Well, Yoshish, thank you so much for joining us today and for telling us all about this really exciting exchange that you've created and and your journey to get there. I always love hearing people's journeys. Uh, thank you very much for having me here. It was fun. That is Yogesh Shahari. He is the CEO and co-founder at LiquidX. Again, their website is lqdex.com. This has been Juliette Lamar with Future Tech Podcast. Thank you all so much for tuning in. You have been listening to Almost Here, Around the Corner Future Technology Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Subscribe to this podcast both to review to discover more future technologies that are poised to transform our lives for better or worse, such as Bitcoin, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more.